So what I'm going to talk about is a, uh, this concept of we need to build better canaries. And, I, and we need to build better canaries to do work for us. Nobody's newsroom is getting larger. Or, well, very few folks' newsrooms are getting larger. We have more work to do, fewer people to do it. What we need to do is we need to offload some of that work. You think about the canary, fairly essential work it did, right, in the mines, as in keeping the rest of the people alive. And I'm not going to tell you that that's what we're planning on doing or should have doing, but, and I'm not saying we're going to have people wearing, you know, suits and doing the Ghostbusters thing. What I'm saying is, is there's a medium in there where we could offload important work onto computers, especially when it comes to sorting and filtering and looking for news in data. The problem right now is that we have too much data. We have tons and tons of data. This is a chart of... Uh, Donations to the Obama campaign by day, by hour. Well, this is ridiculous. I mean, like, I, I don't need this data, but they have this data. But we're all getting presented with lots and lots of data. This is what the Obama campaign does in response to a lot of data. It hires data scientists to do predictive analytics, to run a campaign that treats each one of you potentially as different from every other voter in a way that nobody's ever really done before, but in a way that's going to be the default from elections in the future. This is us. We're bringing gun knives to gunfights. We're banging rocks together. My, my biggest worry as a journalist is that we're going to get an election wrong because we're not really able to track what they're doing. If you want to track what they're doing, you've got to collect information on what they're doing. You have to reverse engineer things. Journalists have always been about reverse engineering things, but we've got to do this on a broader scale with more information. We've got to collect their behaviors, watch what they do, track it systematically so that we can see new things. At the times, we, I maintain our congressional data, and whether or not I'm here, sleeping, alive, dead, frankly, our congressional data machine just continues to suck in data. And it tells me what's happened and when it's happened. This is Denny Hastert. He used to run the House. Institutions like the House of Representatives have rules. They run by rules. One of them is the Hastert rule, which says don't bring a bill to the floor of the House unless it has the support of the majority of the majority party. Well, unfortunately, they keep doing that. Unfortunately for them. But that, you can calculate when that happens. When a bill doesn't have the support of a majority of the majority is a math problem. Well, we can write that in. The computer can tell us exactly when it happens. And it turns out that reporters don't pay attention to votes as much as they should. But they're very important because they are behavior. They tell us about how lawmakers do their jobs. We can, we can compare voting data. We can do this without pencils. We can do this without calculators. We can just have the computer do it for us. I work in Washington. I know lots of people admire Bob Woodward, if you guys still know who Bob Woodward is. But here's the thing. Bob Woodward, being Bob Woodward, becoming Bob Woodward, is an incredibly hard job. It takes decades. Uh, writing a computer program that can tell you exactly what changed between one version of a campaign finance filing and the previous version, or the next version of that filing, that takes a little bit of time, and it works forever, basically. So this is Christy Noem. She's a congresswoman from South Dakota. She's running statewide, well, could run statewide at some point. And let's say, hey, look, I'm not in South Dakota. I work for the New York Times. I don't even circulate in South Dakota for all I know. But if I want to track her, there are ways to do that. I can track her through her campaign finance filing. So inside the Times, we have a site where our reporters can put in their emails, and they'll be notified every time her committee ma makes a filing. And they can kind of download and click on things and see how much money came in during what period and take a look at itemized results if they want to as well, itemized records. So what we do now, or what we've been doing for a long time as journalists, is we prepare for trench warfare, right? We get out there, we run up, out of the trench, we do it, we do our news thing, we put out a paper, we put up a broadcast, and then we go back, and tomorrow we do it all over again. Um, that's dumb. We need to do it a better way. We need to treat the information we gather as if it's actually valuable, rather than sort of throwing it away at the end of the day and starting over tomorrow in some bizarre version of Groundhog Day that doesn't make sense. So doing this, doing this gives you the capacity to be more than a, just a reporter. It gives you the capacity to be that canary, to sort of see things coming you know, as they come in, in real time, being able to decide, hey, this is important. I need to know about it right away. The Bristol Herald Courier won a Pulitzer a couple years ago for an awesome series. It's a 33,000 circulation paper in southwestern Virginia. An awesome series about natural gas royalty payments by the state of Virginia. Of Virginia, excuse me. And what they did was, he just kind of gathered the information and looked at it. And it revealed itself as really good information, really good story. 
What happens if we can set up a system to do that for us automatically? What happens if we can track things in real time, automatically, without even trying? What stories can we do then? Thanks.